Gary Noble, you are senior counsel at the Campaign Legal Center. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Can you talk about some of the structural issues with the Federal Elections Commission that reduce their efficacy today? Well, the basic one is it's a six-member commission, um, three Republicans, three Democrats, and it has to do every action by four votes. So the big problem now is it's splitting a lot along party lines, um, and that stops all action of the agency. Uh, another problem with it is not so much structural, but um, substantive in the sense that there are three commissioners who don't believe in the law. And they've just made it very clear that they think that the law should not be enforced or strictly enforced. Uh, they think some of it's con unconstitutional, and therefore they just vote against bringing enforcement cases. Can you discuss some of the more creative ways that campaigns are working to get around coordinating rules? Yeah, um, one of the interesting ones we saw in 2014 and it's going on today is what's called B-roll. So when a candidate shoots a commercial, obviously they, they shoot the commercial and they do a lot of extra footage. Um, the candidate sitting at his desk, uh, the candidate walking down the hall, talking to staff, that type of thing. And what they did was they put it on the internet, they put it on YouTube, B -roll, uh, the B-roll, and they did it without any sound. Uh, or sometimes it was music, generic music behind it. And they would just leave it there and people would find, these independent expenditure committees would find the B-roll, they were actually told about it, they knew where it was, and they would use it for campaign ads. And so the candidate would say, I didn't coordinate with that committee, um, I didn't give them that footage, I just put it, anybody could take it, put it on the internet, I put it on YouTube. And then the, the independent expenditure committee would do an ad um, put the voiceover, put the graphics on it, and it looked like the candidate's ad. Except at the end, it would say in small letters, not authorized by any candidate. Um, so that was, that was the B-roll one, which was rather novel. Um, and it's one of these things that started in 2014, it's still going on. So the campaigns are putting stuff out there um, for the public to use, quote the public to use, that the independent expenditure groups are using, claiming it doesn't show coordination. With social media now, it's very easy to coordinate without actually coordinating. Talk about how that's working today. Right, the, one of the th things that they're doing is putting out a lot of stuff and just saying it's, it's for the public, it's not for any specific group or any specific activity. Um, what we've seen is the making public uh, polling data. Now campaign polling data is very confidential usually. Uh, campaigns know it has a relatively short shelf life um, and it, it, it affects a lot of their planning and strategy. So one of the things the independent groups would like is that polling data. Um, and so what the campaigns did in 2014 is they used Twitter to put out to, to the quote the public uh, polling data. Um, the Democrats did it and just put it out there and the Republicans did it. And the word with the Republicans was it was coded. So you had to know what the code was to figure out what the actual data was. But there are a lot of examples where they're just putting stuff out there to the, to the quote the public and it's helping coordination. In this election season, Jeb Bush spent a lot of time, quote, testing the waters before he officially declared his candidacy. He raised a lot of money during that time. Is the FEC at all concerned about that? I would hope so, but I'm not going to make any bets on it. We actually filed a complaint on it. Uh, we filed complaints against several candidates. Testing the waters is supposed to be a time period where you're under the contribution limits and prohibitions as a candidate, but you don't have to report yet. And the idea was somebody wants to see whether or not they have support and they don't want to go public about it. So they can go around and talk to potential fundraisers, potential staff, uh, maybe small group meetings, do polling, those type of things. Over time, the FEC has allowed more and more activity to go on under testing the waters, but never like anything we've seen this election. Um, one of the rules says you can't raise more money for testing the waters than you need to test the waters. Um, Jeb Bush raised 100, uh, I think it was about $100 million for the super PAC um, prior to be claiming he was a candidate or admitting he was a candidate. And that just totally blows away the whole testing the waters idea. Um, and then what we saw is that when he became a candidate, he does have to report all that money he raised um, prior, to t prior to being a candidate. And he also was subject to the limits and prohibitions. But they declared very little of that money as actual testing the voters money. A lot of it they just said was, well, he was just going around giving speeches. He wasn't even thinking about becoming a candidate. And it's become pretty ludicrous. Even Jeb Bush, when a reporter was talking to him, um, slipped up and said something about, well, you know, uh, as a candidate, I mean, if I become a candidate. And it just shows that um, it's just a game that they're playing. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise today. My, my pleasure.